Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Levi Woods, this is Drawbridge Finance, and now we're moving into the new year and I'm thinking a ton about different strategies. Now, obviously one of the simplest strategies we can have is owning ETFs or a basket of stocks that can potentially move up over time. Now in 2022, it's been an absolutely abysmal year and there has been some ETFs like the NASDAQ, QQQ, which has just gone like down, down, down. So one of the things I've been thinking about is how can we have the exposure to the upside and limit our exposure to, exposure to the downside? Is it possible? Is it probable? And how does it play out? Hey, if this is your first time here, remember to hit that like button down below. It helps my channel a ton. If you don't subscribe and you're into options trading, then you should definitely hit that subscribe button because this is what I do on this channel. Now, today's video is kind of twofold. I'm going to show you a stock replacement strategy, which would be placed every single Monday for the entire year. And the idea is that I make money on a weekly basis or I lose money on a weekly basis instead of holding stock. Now, the other component is showing you how I can backtest this type of trade or other types of trades in my backtesting spreadsheet that I built specifically for testing complex option trades on a weekly basis. It's pretty cool. Let's get into it. The trade setup, it's called a Zebes. It's a zero extrinsic back ratio spread or a zebra to the upside, but it's got a hedge built into it. And it's a very, very easy setup once you kind of understand the mechanics of it. Now, is it a bit more work than holding stock? Absolutely. The type of trade I'm talking about would ideally be placed on a weekly basis. So we would look at it and say on a Monday, place the trade seven days to expiration and every single Monday for 52 weeks this year, we're going to place the exact same trade. Now, some weeks are going to be losers and hopefully they're small and some weeks are going to be nice winners. I'm using IBKR and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up weekly charts. So today is December 30th and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the 7 D DTE. January 6th is the expiration date that I'm going to look at. Now the trade itself is a zebra. Now to buy into a call zebra is actually a pretty simple setup. What we're going to, going to do is we're going to buy some calls which is going to give some upside potential and we're going to sell an at the money call which takes care of the extrinsic value that it costs to hold these long calls. Very, very simple. All we do is we buy two in the money calls and we sell one at the money call. Now you'll notice that the delta is 1.03 in this particular case. What this means is that I make $1 if the stock goes up a dollar and I lose a dollar if it goes down. The nice thing about this is the deltas are actually dynamic. So as it goes down, the deltas start to reduce and it slows. There's a, the, the profit loss chart looks much more similar to a married put. Now this by itself is fine, but what could happen is we have a 50-50 chance. The, the stock goes up, we make money. The stock goes down, we lose money. We can see that probability of profit being 53%. Now, how can we reduce this potential? Here's a trade idea that some people use. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to double the amount of contracts that we, that we have. So this is going to give us 200 long deltas instead of 100. Then it's simply uh, selling a synthetic short position. So we're going to sell a call $1 above and we're going to buy a put $1 above. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us 100 short deltas. So we end up back in the same situation, 1.07 deltas to the upside and to the downside, we have this kind of valley of death, so to speak. And then if we zoom out a little bit, uh, you know, the stock can potentially, or this position can actually make money in a large down move. So this, this trade by itself, I mean, similarly has about a 54% probability of profit. It has this small valley of death. The max loss is actually surprisingly uh, smaller than the amount of debit that it costs to enter. So instead of me buying, you know, $26,000 position in the NASDAQ this week and hoping that it goes up, I would be putting out about $2,700 and my total risk on the trade would be about $1,950. We can see that reflected here. Now, the reason for that is it, because there's some sort of value in these long positions, no matter where the stock is. If the stock goes down, uh, these long puts will have value. Uh, if the stock goes up, the puts obviously will expire worthless, but the long calls will have value. So either the long calls have value or the long puts have value. At 
at, at expiration. So this is the type of trade that has to be put on and it has to be closed before expiration. You can't just put it on and let it expire. Uh, this definitely requires a weekly management. But what I wanted to know is how does it function over time? What, what can we do? How can we back test it? Well, this is where my spreadsheets come in. I already have a, a spreadsheet built that compares complex options. Now you guys have seen a video on this before. Basically I can put in three different positions into this spreadsheet and then I can compare them graphically. And I also had another spreadsheet that compared weekly returns. It said, well, what if I, I looked back at uh, the last year of data? How did the market perform? How often did the stock market go up or down on a particular ETF? And I thought, well, what, what better opportunity was than it is to combine the two spreadsheets? So I took something that returns a comparison profile and I compared it to my back testing software and married the two together. So this is a completely new sheet and it has one very specific purpose. It weekly back tests complex option strategies and that's all it does. Well, I mean, you can still look at the individual components. You actually get two spreadsheets in one, which is actually really cool. So first of all, let's set it up. Let's uh, plug in the numbers. Now, when you open the spreadsheet, uh, the first thing I need to do is test a symbol. So in this case, I'm going to test the QQQs. I can simply type it in. This is using a Google Finance formula. So the specific entry would be typing in uh, NASDAQ, uh, QQQ using the exchange. So if you're having a hard time pulling some data, try that, adding the exchange with a colon prior to the ticker that you're using. We're just gonna look at QQQs. Now in this particular case, I've left this number of shares owned, which is optional. I left it on because it was part of the, the, the comparison calculator, but for the most part, adding the number of shares owned will create erroneous results. And I don't think it's very appropriate to put in anything in this box, but you can use it just to see the charts if you did want to. We're gonna plug these numbers in exactly how we see them. So we're gonna to go to 257, 264, 265 strikes. So when we're gonna load this up, it's pretty simple. We're going to uh, do the, the long calls first. We're gonna do then some short calls. Then we're going to do a, a short call, one strike above, and then we're gonna do a long put, one strike above. So we're, we're putting in here 257, 264, and then two options at 265. Now for the quantities, we're doing four of the long calls, we're doing two of the short calls, and we're doing one each. And you can see this, as this, uh, as I input this, it changes the cells from red once they're fully completed, and it shows an updated chart on the left side. We see this blue chart. And what we can do is we can actually see that uh, if we enter this for a debit of 2780, so the debit paid to enter the trade is 27.80. We can see how what our profit profile is going to look like. If the stock was going to go up to 280 dollars, we'd make 17.59. If the stock drops down, uh, we can lose up around 1900 dollars. It's exactly the same profit profile that we see over on Interactive Brokers or our platform of choice. Now, what I want to know is how often does it happen? So this is where the backtesting the weekly moves comes in. So what it's doing is it's automatically pulling the stock symbol from the previous sheet. Then it's showing the number of occurrences. Now, there's a, a variable here that we can set. We can say how far back do we want to look? Now, it, it's default to set back from the number of weeks from starting today. So right here in, uh, in, in the backtesting portion, um, I can just place the number of weeks that I want it to do. So if I want it to test like 50 weeks, if I want to just look at the last year, let's say 52 weeks, then it'll, it'll show the backtesting profit loss based on the last 52 weeks based on the historical data that's appearing in this chart. So if we look over here, it's showing it's starting December 31st of 2021, and then it's looking at the weekly return and it's showing the weekly move that occurred, how many of the number of occurrences that there were, and the historical volatility, including a two standard deviation line. Uh, it also shows the historical share price over time. So we can see all of this data and it only fills out the, the, the last 52 weeks. It also tells us what the, the 10 best weeks were of the year and the 10 worst weeks of the year were. This is actually an upgrade and this is actually not part of my uh, weekly and daily uh, backtesting software. This is something new for this spreadsheet specifically, which is pretty cool. 
It also shows you uh, the number of occurrences numerically and what the percentage move was for a single standard deviation, two standard deviations. It's a pretty complex sheet already. But what I want to know is if I was to place this trade every single week for the last 52 weeks, what would the results have been? Now, in this case, this last year is actually pretty terrible. The, the, the stock was drifting down and you can see this, this trade has this large kind of valley of death. So uh, the share price has had a net change uh, from 397 last year to 264 this year, which is a $13,000 reduction on a, from a $39,000 position to a $26,000 position. So this would have been a net change of 13,000. And this particular strategy would have a cumulative return of negative 22,000. So it actually performed very poorly in 2022, but it was a grinding down year. Uh, this is this is the backtesting the the occurrences of the weekly move. So this is the same sort of chart that we see on the other page. I just wanted to include it so you could see it here all together. If I go back and further in time, if I look at 250 weeks, and this chart will do up to 253 weeks, so we can look at five years of data, we can see that the the, the share price uh, on March 16th of 2018 was actually 171. It's currently 264, so it's actually at a net change of $9,000. Again, the cumulative return over time was not great for this particular trade. This it means that the, the stock actually drifts down uh, into this loss zone, which is a little bit greater than the profit zone uh, more, more often than not. And we can see that cluster of times that it happens. Very rarely is it breaking to the, to the upside and very, very infrequently is it breaking massively to the downside, which is uh, causing uh, larger returns. Now, the interesting thing about this is the chart actually automatically calibrates its size. So it is showing you uh, where this range is based on the historical volatility that we're seeing before. So it's looking at this 11% move and it's calibrating and showing you that 11% move. It's actually very, very cool that it calibrates that way. So what we can do now is we can play with the strategy. We can compare it to other ones and see if the, a, a slightly different trade might make more sense. So let's go back over to the platform and let's just move these long calls down. What if we were to play a much tighter, more expensive uh, a, a trade, different deltas? We have a, a 55 delta by moving these calls up. Would this function a little bit better? The cost to enter is smaller, which means the losses are going to be smaller because the, the max loss is relative to how much we pay. So in this case, uh, we are looking at the 1595. So let me just zip over here. I'm gonna just copy and paste uh, this strategy over into this side, and I'm going to change this 257 to a 261, and I'm gonna change the net debit to uh, 1591. So we're gonna have a net debit of 1591, and, and this one is going to be 261. Again, we can see the comparison over here. And then the interesting thing about this is that the, the so-called valley of death is smaller. We have a, a, a smaller risk on a weekly basis and there's greater potential of profits. Now, the cool thing is that it charts it dynamically. It shows us what over the last 250, 250 weeks, um, whether or not the strategy worked or not. Now let's do a third strategy. Let's just do a zebra. Let's say we only wanted to do uh, this portion of the trade and we're going to do it as a single contract giving us 100 deltas. So we're gonna go two and one and what would that look like? If we just drop the synthetic short position, we're gonna change these to two contracts. So this is gonna give me a delta of 77. Uh, it's basically just a zebra. It's upside with a limited loss. The cost to enter is much smaller. We're going to be $770, a net debit of $770. So we're doing three different comparisons. And I want to see which one actually returns the best value because it's a very interesting thing if we look back over the last 250 weeks. Now this moves, when we're looking at live data, this actually moves around quite a bit because what's happening is the share price is actually changing. So if you want to override it and put in a specific share price, that may be one way to do it because these results are um, dynamic based on the current share price. It's just something to note as you're looking at the sheet, this is actually moving around because the, the entry might be slightly different. 
But the, the trades themselves are actually pretty interesting. We are looking at a, a situation where this, this yellow trade or the, the third trade that I've got programmed in here, the zebra by itself, costs a small debit to open every week and has the potential of making money and has limited loss. The blue trade has a bigger potential loss and, and you can kind of look back and say, well, which trades actually made more money? You have to take into consideration that this is the price today. I would assume that with volatility changing, price changing, and the zebras changing over every week, that the debit to enter is not going to be the same week after week, especially over a 250 week period. But that's why I, I set this up so we could test it over 50 weeks. We can say, well, how did it perform last year? See, this blue trade actually had some really terrible returns, never made any money. Red trade actually far exceeded the return of the uh, of just holding stock because a stock position that would have been worth uh, $38,000 last year is only worth $26,000 with a net change of negative 11,000. This red trade theoretically back test is actually only returned a loss of $2,300. The yellow trade lost a little bit more because it had no potential gains. There was, you can see comparatively here that the red trade had some times where it actually made some money where the yellow trade was a loss. There was lots of occurrences where neither trade like the, they never actually traded into those zones big cluster of data here over the last year where the stock fell into this kind of slightly lower range into this valley of death all in all it's a pretty cool spreadsheet i mean it works extremely well for these very very specific trades and if you're doing trades like that if you're looking at like a weekly say a butterfly or something and and saying well i want to set up a butterfly on a weekly basis and i want to compare that how many times did it trade in the range how many times did it trade outside of the range this software will allow you to do that. Uh, it's a Google Sheets format. It's available on my website, drawbridgefinance.ca, and uh, you guys can play with it and see what kind of results you can get. It's pretty cool. If you have any questions, please reach out. If you don't subscribe already, please subscribe. If you like the video, give me a like. It helps the channel a ton. You guys are awesome. Let's get rich together. Thanks so much, and see you very soon.